Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. In this module, we shall be studying about synthetic fertilizers. Synthetic fertilizers are mainly for three elements, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. The use of synthetic fertilizers in India increased during the green revolution period. No doubt that use of synthetic fertilizers played an important role in increasing our agricultural production. But with passage of time, the ill effects of synthetic fertilizers have appeared on different environmental matrices including our soil, our plants, water bodies or even human health. So, the learning objectives of this module are definition and types of synthetic fertilizers, to study major synthetic fertilizers affecting plant growth, to study the effects of fertilizers on soil and human pigs. Let me start with synthetic fertilizers. In the human history, agriculture has been depending on the use of natural fertilizers for increasing the nutrient level in soil. Natur when natural fertilizers are added in the soil, they slowly release the nutrients and these nutrients go to the soil and then taken up by the plants. Means some longer period is taken uh, to get the nutrient be released from the natural fertilizers and reaching up to the plant. As we approached the 20th century, synthetic fertilizer paved an entrance resulting in agricultural revolution of increasing crop yield. The three major components constituting modern synthetic fertilizers are nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. There is a significant improvement in quantity of the available food, but at what cost is still questionable. Means due to the use of these fertilizers, no doubt the quantity of the available food has increased, but a question mark has been put on the quality. Fertilizer is added to soil in substantial form to improve the crop growth and yield. Synthetic fertilizers were firstly used by some ancient farmers and this technology developed with time as the need for more yield increased due to increase in population. Fertilizer is defined as an organic or inorganic material either of natural or synthetic origin added to soil to supply one or more essential nutrients for plant growth. A synthetic or chemical fertilizer may also be defined as an inorganic material of wholly or partially synthetic erosion, synthetic origin added to the soil to enhance plant growth. These provide supplementary nutrients to crops for enhancing plant growth and its yield. Naturally occurring nutrients are not present in usable forms for plants and have to be additionally supplied through these synthetic fertilizers. This figure shows that when organic fertilizers are added in the field, they pass through a number of stages and then they are available to the plant as plant nutrients. Whereas in case of synthetic fertilizer, the elements are present in such a form that is directly available to the plants. Or in other words, we can say that uh, organic fertilizer may take longer period to get its effects on the plants, whereas the effects of, of synthetic fertilizers are immediately visible on the plants. The modern synthetic fertilizers mainly consist of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium blended compounds with addition of some secondary nutrients. Recently, the use of synthetic fertilizers has increased significantly resulting in improved quantity and quality of the crops available today. The nutritional requirement of plants is provided by soil that provides the basic constituents required for these metabolic chemical reactions. But with the limited supply, these components amount 
dwindles in the soil as the plants are harvested causing a reduction in the quality and quantity of crop yield. These chemical components are replaced by fertilizers in the soil. These are specially designed to enhance the growth potential of soil with a better surviving environment compared to natural soil. Plants are composed of four main elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. Out of these the three elements carbon, oxygen and hydrogen are easily available in nature in the form of water and carbon dioxide. The only available form of nitrogen is through some bacteria present in nodules of leguminous plants. They can fix atmospheric nitrogen that is N2 and convert it to ammonia. The fourth element nitrogen makes up a major part but is not present in available forms in atmosphere. Being the most important nutrient as it forms proteins, amino acids, DNA and other components like chlorophyll, it must be available in fixed form to the plants. Let me have a look on the elements that are essential for the growth and development of plants. There are 20 elements which are essential for the growth and development of plants. The first three are carbon, hydrogen and oxygen as we have discussed just now. These are available in nature and can be obtained from the nature by the plants. Then there are three main other macronutrients. These are nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Then there are three secondary micronutrients. These are calcium, magnesium and sulfur. Then there are a number of micronutrients which are required for the growth of plant. These include copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, zinc and nickel and sometimes boron, silicon, cobalt, vanadium. These are present in plant tissue in lesser amounts in ppm level and are needed by enzymes that control plant metabolism and enable catalysts to work on the active sites. Fertilizers have been classified traditionally into two classes. First class is straight fertilizer. Straight this is a traditional term used for fertilizers that are used for one major nutrient being either of the three nutrients NP or K as opposed to multinutrient fertilizers. When secondary nutrients are considered, these include products consisting of elemental sulfur, calcium oxide, magnesium sulfate, etc. In micronutrients, borax, sulfate salts, zinc and iron chelates of micronutrients are considered straight fertilizers. This is not a very accurate term to be used for them because many straight fertilizers also contain other essential plant nutrients such as sulfur in ammonium sulphate. These can also be termed single nutrient and focus mainly on the most important nutrient. To be specific, this term is used for products such as elemental sulfur, urea, and ammonium nitrate. Second category is complex or compound fertilizers. These fertilizers generally contain at least two out of the three major nutrients. Two nutrients may be nitrogen and phosphorus or three nutrients NPK fertilizers. They are generally solid granules and are formed by chemical reaction between the raw materials with the desired nutrients. These are also called multinutrient fertilizers, but they do not incorporate fertilizer mixture 
and bulk blends as no chemical reaction is involved in them. From the ongoing discussion, this is clear that fertile, synthetic fertilizers are mainly for three elements, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. These are available in single element form as well as in multi element form. Let me discuss these one by one. Let me first come to the nitrogen fertilizers. The current environmental and economic issues have increased the need to know about the role of nitrogen and its fate in the crop production systems. Nitrogen is the most deficit nutrient in crops resulting in substantial economic returns for farmers. Here I would like to mention that most of the Indian soils are deficit in nitrogen, average in phosphorus and rich in potassium. However, when the amount of nitrogen inputs in soil system exceeds the crop needs, there is a possibility that excessive amounts of nitrate may enter either ground or surface water. Managing nitrogen inputs to achieve a balance between profitable crop production and environmentally tolerable levels of nitrate in water supplies should be every farmer's goal. The behavior of nitrogen in the soil system is complex. So, an understanding of these basic processes is essential for a more efficient nitrogen management program. The amount of nitrogen present in the soil depends on prevailing climatic conditions, physical and chemical properties of the particular soil. Nitrogen is fixed naturally by leguminous bacteria or by lightning and exists abundantly in our atmosphere as compared to its naturally available forms in soil. Majorly, all nitrogen based synthetic fertilizers are developed by Haber Bosch process that includes combining nitrogen from the air and hydrogen at high temperature and pressure to generate anhydrous ammonia. This fertilizer is widely used, but now its widespread adoption has resulted in unintended prominence to environment affecting the sustainability and quality of our food system. This table shows different types of nitrogen fertilizers. The first one in the table is anhydrous ammonia. It contains 82 percent nitrogen. This is compressed gas having high affinity for water and having pungent odor and corrosive in nature. When we are using anhydrous ammonia as fertilizer, this should be placed at 4 to 6 in depth. This is hazardous and high pressure equipments are required. Generally, anhydrous ammonia is not used in India as fertilizer. The second nitrogen fertilizer is urea. Urea is most widely used nitrogenous fertilizer. Urea contain 46 percent of nitrogen. This is granular solid. This is applied after seeding. This is much less corrosive than other nitrogen fertilizers. But volatilization losses may take place when urea is broadcast without incorporation under warm and windy conditions or alkaline calcareous or drying soils. Then another form of nitrogenous fertilizers is polymer coated urea. Polymer coated urea contains 44 percent nitrogen. This is also granular solid. A polymer coating covers the urea granules. Release of urea is intended to coincide with the crop uptake. Means here the release of nitrogen is slow. This result in decreased nitrogen in a form prone to losses. Polymer coated urea sometimes called as ESN 
and this ESN stands for environmentally smart nitrogen. Then another form is nitrogen solution. It contains 28% uh, nitrogen. This is solution form. 50% of the nitrogen is in the urea form and 50% is in the ammonium nitrate form in nitrogen solution. Nitrogen solution can be applied prior to or after seeding, but may be injurious to crops when applied after emergence. It can be applied with certain pesticides also. Urea portion is subject to volatilization loss when nitrogen solution is surface applied and not incorporated. Then another chemical that can be used as ammonia fertilizer, nitrogen fertilizer is ammonium nitrate. It contains 34 percent nitrogen. This is also granular. Large, larger amount than urea can be applied with the seed of cereal crops. Ammonium nitrate can be applied prior to or after seeding. Out of these different forms of uh, nitrogenous fertilizers which we have discussed, urea is most widely used in India and the chemical formula of urea is C, uh, NH2, CO, NH2, its molecular mass is 60 and nitrogen content in urea is 46 percent. The granules of urea are white in color and uniform in size. This figure shows the granules of urea. As we discussed, urea can be produced by Haber-Bosch process. Basically, this is having two steps. In the first step, we produce ammonia and in the sep second step, ammonia is allowed to react with carbon dioxide to produce urea. Let me have a look on this flow chart that shows that how the ammonia is produced. For the production of ammonia, nitrogen is taken from the atmosphere and hydrogen is generally taken either from the methane gas or from the petroleum products. These two gases are allowed to compress and allowed to react in the main reactor and ammonia gas is produced. This ammonia gas is reacted with carbon dioxide to produce urea. So, students we have studied about different types of nitrogen fertilizers and we also studied about the Haber process by which urea is produced and we also concluded that urea is most widely used nitrogenous fertilizers. Second in the list of synthetic fertilizers is phosphorus fertilizer. Phosphatic fertilizers majorly consist of phosphorus in the form of calcium phosphate, potassium phosphate or ammonium phosphate. The phosphate part of fertilizers being available to plants may be fully or partially water soluble or citrate soluble. It dissolves slowly with comparatively more efficiency in the acidic soils. The phosphorus availability is mainly presented as P2O5 percent depending on concentration or the total phosphate present in fertilizer. Although the requirement of phosphorus to plants is low than other major nutrients, but it influences the energy transfer and their early developmental growth stages. Phosphorus plays an essential role in stimulating young root development, early fruiting, and controls several biochemical processes of the plant like photosynthesis, respiration, cell division, growth and development. The phosphorus uptake are depending on pH occurs primarily in forms of HPO4 2 minus and H2PO4 minus that is orthophosphate forms with the latter being common in acidic soils. This table shows different types of phosphorus based fertilizers. Let me discuss them one by one. The first one in the list is monoammonium phosphate. 
mono ammonium phosphate is available in several forms. Uh, this contains one form contain 11 percent nitrogen, 52 percent phosphorus, second form contains 12 percent nitrogen, 51 percent phosphorus and third form contains 10 percent nitrogen and 50 percent phosphorus. Mono ammonium phosphate is solid, granular and this does not absorb moisture during storage. Mono ammonium phosphate is fairly resistant to breakdown during handling. Monium, mono ammonium phosphate is most commonly used high analysis dry phosphorus fertilizer. Second phosphorus fertilizer is diammonium phosphate. Diammonium phosphate contains 18 percent nitrogen and 46 percent phosphorus. Diammonium phosphate in vernacularly called as DAP. DAP is solid and granular. The granules of DAP are very uneven and this is greenish in color. If you take urea granules and you take DAP granules, you can identify them with naked eye because urea granules are white in color and uniform in size whereas, DAP granules are greenish in color and very ununiform in size. When we use DAP then phosphorus availability to plants similar to mono ammonium phosphate, DAP is more toxic than MAP when placed with the seed. DAP is most widely phosphorus fertilizer in India. The another phosphorus fertilizer is ammonium polyphosphate solution. Ammonium polyphosphate solution contains 10 percent nitrogen and 34 percent phosphorus. This is liquid in nature and in this case also the phosphorus availability to plants similar to mono ammonium phosphate. Another phosphorus fertilizer may be phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid contains 54 percent phosphorus and this is liquid in nature. Phosphoric acid burns skin upon contact, requires specialized delivery system that can withstand corrosiveness of the phosphoric acid. Primarily used for dual band application with nitrogen fertilizers, usually phosphoric acid is not used in India by farmers as fertilizer. Then another form of phosphorus fertilizer is triple superphosphate. Triple superphosphate contains 44, 45 percent phosphorus. Triple superphosphate is solid and granular in nature. Phosphorus availability is less than for phosphorus fertilizer containing ammonium in the triple superphosphate. So, after this discussion on different forms of phosphorus fertilizers, I will conclude that DAP is most commonly and most widely used phosphorus fertilizer in India. In India mainly two fertilizers are used by the farmers and these fertilizers are urea and DAP. Urea is used as a source of nitrogen and DAP is used as a source of phosphorus. The amount of phosphorus that is made available to plants through fertilizers depend upon the extent to which monophosphate or monohydrogen phosphate or dihydrogen phosphate ions are supplied. On the basis of solubility, the phosphatic fertilizers are divided into two categories. One are water soluble and second are citric acid soluble. Let me discuss them one by one. Water soluble. Water soluble fertilizers containing phosphorus in available form and are readily absorbed by young plants in neutral soils. Well, in case of acidic and alkaline calcareous soils, the free ion forms in aluminum hydroxyphosphate is transformed to insoluble calcium phosphate. The common examples of these water soluble phosphorus fertilizers are given in the table. The examples are 
सिंगल सुपर फॉस्फेट डबल सुपर फॉस्फेट ट्रिपल सुपर फॉस्फेट एंड अमोनियम फॉस्फेट नाउ लेट वी कम टू दी सिट्रिक एसिड सोल्यूबल फॉस्फोरस फर्टिलाइजर दीज फर्टिलाइजर आर नॉट वाटर सोल्यूबल एंड आर बेस्ट सूटेड फॉर एसिडिक सॉइल्स दीज सिट्रेट सोल्यूबल फॉस्फोरस फर्टिलाइजर एट लो पी एच आर कन्वर्टेड टू मोनो कैल्शियम फॉस्फेट द एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ सिट्रिक एसिड सोल्यूबल्स फॉस्फोरस फर्टिलाइजर आर गिवन इन द टेबल द एग्जाम्पल्स आर डाई कैल्शियम फॉस्फेट बेसिक स्लैग एंड कैल्शियम मेटा फॉस्फेट मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रोसेस ऑफ कमर्शियल फॉस्फेट फर्टिलाइजर रॉक फॉस्फेट इज द बेसिक रा मेटीरियल कमर्शियली यूज फॉर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ऑफ मोस्ट फॉस्फेट फर्टिलाइजर इट इज यूज एज ए मेजर सोर्स ऑफ रा मेटीरियल इन द फूड एंड केमिकल इंडस्ट्री द इनिशियल प्रोडक्ट is phosphoric acid that is produced either by dry or wet process the dry treatment occurs in an electric furnace where rock phosphate as substrate producing more expensive phosphoric acid often called white or furnace acid now let we come to the third synthetic fertilizer that is potassium fertilizer potash or potassium is an important nutrient for crops as it affects the yield and quality along with general health and vigor of a crop the potassium fertilizers are mainly water soluble salts and the potassium concentration is still expressed generally as k2o percent the nutrient k or nutrient potassium is not present as k2o in soils plants or in fertilizers but this is present as potassium ion k positive in soils or plants and chemically as kcl or k2so4 compound blended in fertilizer but for the purpose of expression or calculation this is generally used as k2o percent it also affects indirectly the nitrogen uses efficiency of plants and so the plants can less effectively handle stress caused by frost wind water logging and heat hence it is essential to bring soils to the target index for plant available potassium that is exchangeable potassium and then maintain this level by replacing the amount of potash removed each year in the harvested crops potassium is present in three major forms in the soils and these forms are exchangeable or available potassium absorbed by the soil cec fixed by some minerals and releasing slowly to a available forms and third one is unavailable mineral form when potassium fertilizer is applied its fate depends on the cc cc means cation exchange capacity of soil and clay minerals present in the soil if sandy soils with low cec are considered movement of potassium is by mass flow and there can be significant loss from the surface of soil especially when there has been heavy rainfall now let we come to the production of potassium fertilizer the majority of kcl is mined and used for generating various grades of potash fertilizers or we can say kcl is used as potassium fertilizer kcl is also called as murate of potash the various grades of potash fertilizers are designed considering particle size whether granular whether in soluble form whether in standard form whether in fine form the granulated kcl is applied with other nitrogen and phosphorus based fertilizers in mixture form generally to provide the nutrients now let we discuss production of potassium fertilizer the majority of kcl that is potassium chloride is mined and used for generating various grades of potash fertilizers mainly designed considering 
particle size, whether granular, soluble, standard or fine. Potassium chloride is the commonly used potassium fertilizer and this is also called as murate of potash. The granulated KCl is applied with other nitrogen and phosphorus based fertilizers in mixture form, generally to provide the nutrients required by the crops in a single application. Another potassium fertilizer in the form of potassium sulphate is frequently used. It is mainly used for crops that require additional chloride that are not provided by common KCl fertilizer. Potassium sulphate can be either extracted from the mineral langbinite or synthesized by reaction between potassium chloride and sulfuric acid at high temperature. If magnesium salts are added to potassium sulphate, it produces potassium magnesium granular compound fertilizer. This table shows different types of potassium based fertilizers. The common potassium based fertilizer is potassium chloride. It contains about 60 to 62 percent of K2O. The another one is potassium sulphate. It contains about 50 percent of K2O. And third one is potassium magnesium sulphate, a compound mixture. It contains about 20 percent of K2O. Then uh, another potassium based fertilizer is potassium thiosulphate. Potassium thiosulphate contains sulfur also and it contains about 17 percent of K2O and then another is potassium nitrate. Potassium nitrate contains potassium as well as nitrate nitrogen and it contains 44 percent of K2O. Among these all potassium chloride or mu rate of potash is widely used as potash fertilizer. Now, let me come to the effects of synthetic fertilizers. These synthetic fertilizers have their positive effects as well as their negative effects. First, let me discuss positive effects. The synthetic fertilizers provide good amount of required nutrients to the soil by acting on soil immediately. But the organic fertilizers need to break down before they could be absorbed by soil. This property of fertilizers is highly efficient in providing nutrients to malnourished plants, although they are easy to handle, store and use with immediate effects. Now let we come to the negative impacts of synthetic fertilizer. The synthetic fertilizer possesses prolonged negative effects. The beneficial microorganisms that transform dead organic matter remains into organic residue are killed in the soil. These damage the natural characteristics of soil causing over fertilization of soil with minerals like uh, iron, zinc, carotene, vitamin C, copper and protein. Nitrogen and phosphorus based synthetic fertilizers cause groundwater contamination by leaching. You all know that in recent years the presence of nitrate has been detected in the state of Punjab and Haryana where fertilizers are used in excessive amount. Similarly, the eutrophication of water bodies is very common nowadays due to the runoff of phosphorus based fertilizers from the agricultural fields. These phosphorus fertilizers may enter the lakes, streams, rivers and other water bodies and may disrupt the overall aquatic ecosystem. These fertilizers increase the nitrate levels of soil that causes production of toxic nitrites when consumed by plants. These when consumed by living organisms react with the blood hemoglobin and cause methemoglobinemia, methemoglobinemia also called as blue baby syndrome causing suffocation and damaging the body systems that may lead 
even to death in extreme conditions. Now a question arises that how to minimize the negative effects of synthetic fertilizers. The synthetic fertilizers should be diluted and mixed well into the soil as improper dilution can burn and damage the plants. The proper mixing will prevent runoff during heavy rain. The produced yield of vegetables and fruit etc. from synthetically treated soil should be washed properly before eating or consuming. The leftover or unused fertilizer should be safely stored away from water, pets and children. At last, we should consider uses of organic fertilizers that are safe in comparison to synthetic fertilizer and causes no pollution. In different agricultural universities have given the packages of practices for different crops. So, you all are suggested to follow the guidelines with respect to the uh, usage of fertilizers in different crops. Similarly, nowadays the concept of integrated nutrient management is in use. We know that synthetic fertilizers are going to exist here for many years or many decades. At present, it is not possible to completely replace the synthetic fertilizers by organic manures. But at least organic manure can be added to some extent in the overall scheme of the use of nutrient and this use of different fertilizers synthetic as well as organic manures in our agricultural fields is called as integrated nutrient management. And by using this integrated nutrient management, the negative impacts of synthetic fertilizers can be reduced to a certain extent. So dear students, to summarize this module, in this module we have studied about various synthetic fertilizers. We mainly concentrated on the nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. We studied about their synthesis, we studied about the importance, we studied about their positive impacts and we studied about their negative impacts and in the end we also discussed that how the impacts of synthetic fertilizers can be minimized. I hope you enjoyed this module, thank you.